Thank you very much and good day. I'm very thankful, first of all, with the government of Colombia as the host of this magna event and having chosen to do it in this beautiful city. Many thanks, Maria Angela. And to the government of Colombia, thank you very much, President Santos. Thank you, John Chipman, for having invited us and brought us together and for moderating this panel. Maria Angela described this phenomena that we have been seeing in foreign politics where there has been a migration from oceans to oceans, the concentration of things that went from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic and now migrated to the Pacific Ocean. But there has been another phenomena that also draws our attention from the perspective of the subjects or the issues that the world is discussing and the way it is discussing it. We go on to a scheme where we begin to discuss by blocks. And if we would have stopped a few years ago to identify where the blocks of dialogue or where the process of integration would have worked faster, one might have thought from the start that Latin America was a good form for it to occur. We shared history. We shared those who had achieved independence. We shared language, culture, aspirations on large part. We have spoken of integration for more than 200 years. But just but a few years ago, we wake up to a reality where the phenomena of integration have progressed much faster outside of Latin America. There is an integrated European bloc that has been able to reach agreements thanks to the crisis, but through the crisis they have built new institutions. And we turn to the Asia-Pacific region and we find opportunities for integration that have been successful and ambitious such as the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And we find that in this debate, in this situation, that Latin America still was a, had a ways to go to build a mechanism for dialogue that would allow for this integration. Yesterday, President Santos mentioned how this idea came about, an idea that has not been around for a while, and that was expressed in a treaty of only seven pages and two main objectives. The first of these was to build a region of deep integration and that to find this integration through the expression and free movement of goods, services, capital, and persons. And a second main objective that was very explicit, that this platform be built and turned into a window that could project the countries of the alliance and the world to the world and that would place a special emphasis on the Asia-Pacific region. I would like to say that this good idea has allowed for a good amount of deliverables that allowed us to begin to work on these objectives. We wanted a free movement of goods and services. And only three years after having signed this alliance, it is practically a reality to have a deep, modern, broad, and ambitious agreement. 92% of the taxes and the remaining 8% with a specific date that offers a platform to free trade, one that is robust, flexible, modern, and significant. We want there to be movement of persons. And we raised the visa requirements. And for the first time last year, in the case of Mexico, a country that receives nearly 30 million visitors a year, out of the 10 countries that most visitors bring to Mexico, four were from the Latin American region, and three were our partners from the Alliance. We had also stated that we wanted creativity in regards to moving capital and goods. As of today, our four stock markets are integrated and are part of a platform of movement that is the greatest in Latin America. The sum of these Stock Exchange has more than $940,000 billion in capitalization. In regards to cooperation, what we are doing and how this has been able to find a concrete expression in regards to scholarships. What this means is that out of the objectives in this alliance, we are being able to conclude a first stage, and this first stage is concluding successfully. Now this alliance needs to meet the second one, which is to turn into an opportunity for protection in the whole region of the Asia-Pacific. We had a first meeting 
in New York from a perspective this forum represents a second opportunity for dialogue when there is a, the Asia Pacific discussion forum in Costa Rica we will have a third opportunity for dialogue and we would like to highlight in the Latin American forum meeting in Mexico in April for it to be an opportunity for business persons from the Asia Pacific region to meet with those from Latin America because this element of support for businesses has allowed it, the alliance to have more dynamism and it encourages the effort we do among governments but what really pushes us forward is the challenge that businesses have stated that we really be able to meet these objectives that we have set before us so we are looking forward to this first corporate meeting between the countries of the alliance and those of APEC and the economic forum we will have in Ep April in Mexico. I hope to see more progress and that we can offer more continuity to this dialogue so we can report the progress made and what positive changes we have had in the General Assembly in New York. But this first step forward and this first set of deliverables triggered a dialogue, what Chipman call, referred to at the beginning, the revolution of the alliance itself, which has been very interesting. First, it triggered a circuit of dialogue among our business persons who got to know each other and now are engaging in business together and allowed for an opportunity of dialogue between our promotion entities, which have found that it is better to present ourselves to the world within the alliance that ensures an agreement of dynamism and policies, and that within this joint opportunity from presenting ourselves to the world, we can highlight the advantages of each and every one of the countries. We found that there was an opportunity for dialogue in a natural way between the representatives of dialogues that are now accredited as Mexican, Chilean, Peruvian, and Colombian but that now present themselves in a coordinated fashion and have benefits of doing so as members of the alliance. It also triggered a circuit of dialogue in issues that are very important to be able to spearhead the first objective of free mint and commerce, goods, services, capital, and persons. As of today, the alliance speaks of how we can reduce service costs and migratory rights to support. And as a second step, after having waived the visas, and how we can facilitate the stay of individuals that visit our countries from the perspective of business. We have seen that this movement must be supported by a good secure environment of safety and security. You want the movement for individuals to always bring about prosperity. In order to do so, it has implied a dialogue such as one that we didn't have previously in regards to migratory movements and the exchange and security, which offers the relationship among countries and the platform of the alliance, a, it allows it to be much more solid. We have a fund for cooperation. We have found through this cooperation what we can do together and individually to benefit third other countries. In regards to climate change, we present ourselves together, the four countries in Peru, and we contribute not only to the negotiation, but specifically as the Pacific Alliance to the climate change debate, finding specific contributions that we did in a joint fashion to the Green Fund and the structural support that we offered the negotiation that leaves from Peru with a critical path that allows us to be certain that Paris has an opportunity for success that is much greater to that which it has prior to the COP of Peru. And we hope to also be able to express ourselves in a combined fashion. We are now promoting projects for the region that can change its competitive facet. We have found that we have a, we want to have one network of electricity that goes from Colombia to Canada that will change its competitive position for the full Central America. We are looking for opportunities to promote foreign direct investment and we are working to have our development banks speak so that they can find better support schemes for SMEs to a greater scale. We are also looking to have the sectors that 
in each of our countries develop in a greater fashion. We're also speaking of mining in a joint fashion. Mining that has its expressions from illegal exploitation to a, the joint cultural expression of our mining products from what is done informally to industrially. And every day we have a greater participation, such as Maria Angela expressed, and with a greater content on behalf of observers and the member countries. So I hope this dialogue can be, serve as a testimony of a good idea that has met its objectives, that has expanded opportunities for dialogue and allows the Alliance of the Pacific to be this mechanism of projecting this region to the world. And specifically in this setting with the Asia Pacific region. Thank you very much.